agent public. Being a public agent isn't easy at all times. You can't give up on your office straight after leaving the state institution you work for. Sounds confusing? Let me explain. Let's take a public agent. Let's call him Val. Val's duties include tax control in a number of companies. He imposes fines to these companies, gives them penalties and uses many other sophisticated words to stress out the taxpayers. Val is a hard-working, conscious employee but doesn't feel appreciated. Small salary, lots of work and a tiny office. The corporation that's being supervised and checked up on by Val decides to take advantage of this. They know they haven't quite fully paid taxes yet and there's a high probability Val knows this too. Now, the CEO of the company is struck by a brilliant idea. What if we offer Val a job at our company? Indeed, after he finishes the tax control and gives us a clear record, he could certainly work for us. We'll offer him a salary twice as big, a desk with an ergonomic chair, air conditioning, etc. Instead, all we want from him is rather insignificant. To ignore the violations. All set and done. Val takes up the job offer and after getting his new employment, we have the following situation. The company that Val used to check on, finding violations and imposing fines according to the law, right until yesterday, is now having its interest defended by Val. Before whom? Before his old mates from his old job, with whom he's still going for a pint every now and then. Or, let's take a different scenario. Say that Val, in his capacity of public agent, has no supervisory or control duties. And the public institution which he works for announces a public tender, wishing to buy certain assets, let's say computers. A company with a sneaky manager who is determined to win this tender offers Val a job with the firm. With a good salary, desk, chair and all that. You can't disagree that one can find a better person to negotiate a future deal. He personally knows everybody who will have a word to say in the final decision. He also knows some secrets from the inside. Secrets that other bidders don't know. Guess who won the tender and who gets to sign the contract in the end? You're right, it's the company which has recently employed Val. Even though the machine that Val used to print out his resignation letter hasn't cooled down yet. The trouble is that in both cases, it is society that suffers loss. The phenomenon of migration of public agents to the private sector in legal terms is called revolving doors. And no, it's not actual doors that we're talking about here. It's a phenomenon that can easily lead towards influence peddling, conflict of interest and corruption. And since it is obviously easier to prevent it systematically rather than handcuff everybody around, the following integrity rules must be observed. When being offered a job in the private sector that the public agent is considering to take up on, he or she is expected to notify within three days the head of the institution, or if the case, the National Integrity Authority. Former public agents are not allowed to take up on a job at a company for a year after their resignation from the public institution if, throughout the last year of service, the public agent exercised supervisory or control duties regarding the said company. Is that clear? For a year, you don't go to work where you've been checking. Even if he or she had no direct supervisory or control duties, the public agent who has migrated into the private sector is not allowed, for a year, to represent any individual or legal entity in dealings with the public institution where he or she has worked before. Also, the head of the public institution is prohibited for one year after the resignation of the public agent to conclude any contracts with the company represented by the ex-employee or with a company in which the former employee, his or her relatives, own shares or hold managing or inspecting positions. In other words, if you are the head of a public entity, you don't enter into contracts with the private firms where your ex-employee or their relatives are hired for one year after the resignation of the said employees. Observing this rule protects us, the citizens, from the abuses of those who hold the power now in the state and who used to hold it once. 
No one shall use their personal relationships with former colleagues from public institutions or sensitive information one became aware of during the public office for own personal interest, especially when this person was paid from our money, mine and yours. And remember, integrity is freedom.